in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, we bless your holy name for giving us this great opportunity to come before you to study your word. We commit ourselves unto your hands. We ask your divine protection, favor, grace upon our life. And Lord God of Israel, use us to be a blessing, to be a blessing to your children in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we thank you. Adore you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Beloved, you are most welcome to God's own elect word and prayer meeting. Mama Meg, you are most welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm happy seeing you. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Koma siyande brokapa. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord. Uh, before then, let us pray. Today, we have a very interesting topic to treat. And the topic is the difference between you and them. The difference between you and them. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you. We bless your holy name. But though you, you are wonderful God, everlasting Father, we thank you for giving us the great opportunity to come before you to study your way. It is our prayer that we will understand your word and apply them rightly in our lives. That at the end of the day, we may be able to give glory and honor to you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you that you have done this in Jesus' name. Amen. I am traveling today for the burial of my mother. Oh, oh, may the Lord be with you. May the Lord protect you. May the Lord save you from every work of the devil done against you. So I hope you are coming to Ghana, right? And, sorry, Nigeria. May the Lord be with you and 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 be and, and protect you from every work of the devil. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the favor of the Lord go before you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord for your life. Amen. Okay, so we are moving. We are, we are uh, going straight forward to our studies. Hallelujah. And the topic is the difference between you and them. The difference between you and them. The Bible teaches us that right from the Garden of Eden, God gave Adam commandment uh, concerning the tree of life. And, sorry, concerning the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the uh, devil took advantage of this commandment and then deceived Eve and Adam to go contrary to the commandment of God, so they eventually sin, hallelujah, against God's order. And uh, uh, because of that, they died spiritually. They died spiritually. Praise the living God. Now, the Bible shows that the same thing happened to those who received the commandment that Moses brought from Mount Sinai. The same thing happened to them. Hallelujah. So when you read the book of Romans chapter 7, verse 7 to 9, it says, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law. For I would not have known covetousness Unless the law had said, you shall not covet. Now, this you shall not covet is quoted from Ten Commandments. Praise the Lord. It's quoted from Ten Commandments. So, actually, he's saying the Ten Commandments is what opened their eyes to sin. It made them to know what sin is about. So, he says, you shall not covet. And then, verse 8 says, but sin taking opportunity by the commandment produce in me all manner of evil desire praise the lord for apart from the the law sin was dead i was alive once without the law but when the commandment came sin revived and i died hallelujah so the commandment itself was good but the problem is that it couldn't help any man. It's rather open door for 
the devil, for the enemy to deceive man, to rather have evil desires in the heart. Praise the Lord. To have evil desires in the heart. So all those who are under this commandment from Mount Sinai, their spiritual state is something that Apostle Paul declare, made it clear that that's their spiritual state. Hallelujah. It says in the book of Romans chapter 7 verse 14, it says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, soul and the sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. Why? Because the law itself also brought them spiritual blindness. According to a scripture, when Moses was bringing this law, his face was shining, so he put a veil on his face. And by doing that, he put a spiritual blindness to the people who are under the law. So they become blind. So whatever they do, they don't understand. So he said, I don't understand what I do. Praise the Lord. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. He, they are willing to keep the commandment of God, but they cannot do it. Praise the Lord. He said, but what I hate, that I do. So that the situation of the people under the law, it's not me saying it. That's what the scripture says. It says, if then I do not, I do what I will not do. I will not to do. I will not to do. I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Praise the Lord. The point is this, the Lord is good. But when the person sees that the Lord said, that shall not do this, that shall not work on Sabbath, that shall not do that, that shall not do this, and all this command one, the law was brought to them. The moment the people see that thing, the sin that were in them, lying in them dead, revived. The sin revived, and all manner of evil desires began to manifest in their heart. Hallelujah. So that's how the situation so they, they are willing to do exactly what the commandments say, but they cannot do it. Because the sin that dwells in them has been revived. So definitely they have to do the opposite. Praise the Lord. That is a situation of the people under the law. Hmm. So all those who are under the law that Moses brought from the mountain Sinai. That is their spiritual state. Hallelujah. And we know from the mountain Sinai, it's not only the Ten Commandments, a lot of laws were brought from mountain Sinai. And one of them is the Titan pain, according to Luke, Luke, uh, Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30 to 34. It says, and all the tithe of the land, and all the tithe of the land should be brought to God. And it said, this, verse 34, it said, these are the commandments with God, with the Lord, command Moses for the children of Israel from Mount Sinai. Praise the Lord. So, all those people are keeping these laws. The law of Titan, the law of Sabbath, Ten Commandment, the law of observation of days and seasons, all those laws. Praise the Lord. They are from Mount Sinai, and when you keep it, it leads you into a slavery of sin. It leads you into a slavery of sin. And you can do nothing about it. Praise the Lord. Sometimes the Pharisees were trying to justify themselves that they are righteous. But in their heart, they are rotten. The reason why that it made the, the things worse for these people was that when this law was given to them and the sin was revived in their heart, uh, a judgment of a judgment of death was also added to it. So most of the laws, when you commit wrong with it, when you make a mistake with it, you have to die. And so they are willing to commit sin, yet they are afraid. So in their heart, they are committing those sins because their heart is willing to do that. Their heart desiring to do that. So at the end of the day, they become rotten in the heart and physically appear good to others. That was the situation. 
Hallelujah. Praise the living God. So, all these people keeping this loss, they ended up becoming like that. Hallelujah. That is why the Lord Jesus Christ told the Pharisees who believe in him, or the Jewish people who believe in him, in him that when they know the truth, the, Lord, the truth will set them free. And they don't agree to that. And the Lord said, told them that you are sinners. Everyone who keeps sin is a, is a slave to sin. Let's see what the Lord Jesus Christ said. John chapter 8, verse 31 to 35. It says, Then Jesus said to those Jews, those Jews, the Jews are the law keepers. They are the ones who receive the law. Those Jews who believe in him. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. You are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. And the truth shall make you free. Then they answered and said, answered to him, We are Abraham's descendant and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Then Jesus answered, said, answered and said, Mostly, I said, most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin, and a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Praise the Lord. That is it. So, he was telling them that the fact that you are under the law, no matter how you try to be righteous, you are still a slave to sin. And that is why he came to set them free from this sin slavery. He came to redeem them from the bondage of the law so that they can be free from the sin. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And that is the issue here. Mm. So, the Lord made them to understand that the fact that they remain slave, they cannot abide in the house of God. The fact that they live by the, 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 the commandment, the Ten Commandments and everything entails, they can never live in the house of God forever. So in the book of Galatians chapter three, uh, chapter 4 verse 21, Apostle Paul also confirmed the same thing. Build on this truth. And he said, tell me, you, want, you who want to, to, to be under the law, are you not aware of what the law says? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman and the other by the free woman. His son by the slave woman was born according to the flesh, but his son by the free woman was born as a result of the divine promise. He's talking about Isaac and Ishmael. And said, these things are being taken figuratively. The women represent two covenant. Hallelujah. Represent two covenant. One covenant from, one covenant is from Mount Sinai. That is the Ten Commandment. That the Lord Jesus Christ brought from Mount Sinai. I said Jesus Christ. Moses brought from Mount Sinai. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is what, hallelujah, Moses brought from Mount Sinai. Why covenant from Mount Sinai? And said, um, from Mount Sinai, and bear fruit, uh, bear children who are to be slaves. Bear children who are to be slaves. So the covenant mountains from Mount Sinai, which has to do with the Ten Commandments, tight paying, uh, uh, observation of days and seasons, and all other things, uh, fresh fruit, whatever they are, are from Mount Sinai. Bible say it bears children to slavery. What slave is talking about? Children to slave of sin. Slaves of sin. So no matter what you try to do under the law, as a righteous person, you end up being a slave to sin. And Jesus Christ said, Slave will never stay in the house of God. And the same thing this scripture says. This scripture also, when you continue, it indicates that just as Ishmael and the, father, uh, and the mother was sacked from the house of Abraham, the same thing, that whoever lived by this covenant from Mount Sinai will be sacked from the house of God. And this makes it everything very dangerous and serious that a Christian shouldn't joke with it. Hallelujah. Keeping the covenant from Mount Sinai is a very dangerous thing. Hallelujah. 
So, as I said, it, it, it makes them slaves to sin. Even the Pharisees, who are say they are stricter, they are stricter on keeping the law. Praise the Lord. They are very strict in keeping the law. Even them. But the Lord Jesus said that they are rotten inside. They are rotten inside the heart. In the book of Matthew chapter 23, verse 20, 25 to 30, 37, it says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and dishes, but and dish and but inside they are full of extortion and self indulgence. Blind Pharisees first cleanse the inside of the cup and dish that the outside of them may be clean also. He went on and said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside are full of dead men, bones and all uncleanness. Hallelujah. And when told it, the same thing you appear to people uh, righteous, but inside of you it are full of lawlessness. Praise the Lord. That's how the, the Lord makes people who are under it. So the Lord tells you, if you do this, you end up in that. If you do this, you'll be killed. If you do this, you'll do that. So they are afraid. Yet, it has already generated evil, spirit, uh, evil descent, disaster in them. So physically, they appear, those who are under the law, physically, they appear good. They do everything good to please God. But in their heart, they are all kind of lawlessness. They sleep with women in their heart. They, they steal in their heart. They kill in their heart. They do all the evil things in their heart. And physically, they will not do it. And if you physically don't do it, the Lord does not catch you. The Lord has no problem with you. If you are doing, you only you are doing all things in your heart. And you are not, all the sins in your heart. And you are not doing it physically. Hallelujah. The Lord has no problem with you. Praise the Lord. So they are free to do all those things. And that's what the Lord Jesus came. To save the people of it, uh, under the law from it. To redeem them from the law. Hallelujah. And so, in this case, you could see that the people of the people under the law are not of themselves. They sin not because they they are willing to sin, but the sin is they, they sin because the, the sin is a push them to commit that, those sins. You get a point here. Pushes them to commit sins. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. But when the Pharisees and so the Lord Jesus Christ, when He came to um, sorry, the Lord Jesus Christ, when He came to save them, He did not have much problem with them. They committing sins in their heart or whatever, they didn't have problem with them. But when the Pharisees refused to admit that they are in sin, then the Lord Jesus Christ told them. That way, Jesus Christ started rebuking them and told them, because you don't admit, your sins will remain. In the book of John, chapter 15, verse 12, it says, If I had not come and spoke to them, they would have no sin. They would not have no sin. Though they are committing sin. But seeing the Lord Jesus Christ had not come, the Lord was not the Lord was closing his eyes on them because they are ignorant. And the sins that they are committing is not them want to do it. The sin itself produced all those evil desires in them. And for that matter, God was concerning them. Until the Lord Jesus came and began to tell them that you are under sin. You are slaves to sin. So come to me and I will save you. And they said, no, we are not sinners. You are not sinners. Who told you that we are, we, we are sinners? What, what do you know? By then the big pastors were there. The reverends were there. Where, where the, the, the bishops were there. The PhD in, uh, in, 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 in this thing. Praise the Lord. In theology were there. So they even term Jesus Christ is a, is a illiterate. He didn't know anything. Praise the Lord. They term him as an illiterate who does not know the law. Bible says one day Jesus Christ went there and then preached and then began to quote the things from the law. And they were marvelous. They said, ah, ah, this guy did not learn the law. But how did he know these things? Praise the Lord. Yes. God uses the foolish things like me to confine the world. 
or confine the wise. Hallelujah. So the Lord said, I told them that if, if I had not come to tell you all these things, then you have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Now they have no excuse for their sin. Hallelujah. I believe in those days we are all keeping the law. Because we are born into it. We are receiving this titan thing. Observing days and seasons. We are observing Christmas and Easter and all those things. Uh, the Lord was just having mercy on us. The Lord was just having mercy on us. Because you know that we are doing it out of ignorance. So we are wrong although. But the Lord was just having mercy on us. But we got a time the Lord draw our attention on the truth that all these things are not practices of the Christians. Why? Because according to Apostle Paul, he wrote to Galatians who tried to go back to the Lord to observe days and seasons and the years. Apostle Paul told them that what you are doing, I'm afraid for you because I have wasted my time on you. Why? Because you have, by that you have departed from Christ. Galatians chapter 1 verse 6, he told them point blank, when you do that, you have departed from Christ. And say, I marvel that you have very, you have very soon, so soon, departed from the one who called you to the grace. And you are giving yourself to different gospel. What did they do? They went and tried to keep the law. And so they started observing Sabbath. Started observing seasons and years. So chapter, uh, chapter 4, verse 8 to 11, he made them to understand. When we're not Christians, when we're not, uh, we don't know by God, or God doesn't know us, or we don't know God. That was the time that we are serving those things as gods. But they are not gods. About what was telling them. The days and seasons and years, we're serving them as gods. So whoever is keeping some day as holy day, or as a day of serving God, is not serving the true God. If there's any day to be chose to be serving God in it, Apostle Paul would never have written that letter to them. Praise the Lord. Say, those days we don't know God. You read that scripture, you understand. Galatians chapter uh, uh, 4, verse 8, now to, 8, 8 to 11. Those days we don't know God, that we serve those things as God. Those days we are slaves, that we're serving Sabbath as God. And so when Jesus Christ came and they tried to, uh, 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 no, try to lord over him with that law of Sabbath, Jesus Christ said, "No, don't know what you are talking about. I am the Lord of the Sabbath. The Sabbath cannot control me. I cannot serve Sabbath as my Lord." But God intentionally put all those laws, Sabbath and everything, on them as slaves because they are not sons. To be slaves under those laws. Praise the Lord. To be slaves as 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 this thing, and those laws. So all of them are slaves. Do you get it? Yes. And so the Lord said, "I'm not a slave, and I'm a Lord over the over the over the Sabbath. So He cannot no bounce on me with this kind of law." And that is the Bible said. That is the reason why they want to kill him. The more they want to kill him, because it's not keeping the laws of more. Of the Sabbath, they, that is the window. This reason why the Jewish wanted to kill him the more. Praise the Lord, Hallelujah! Yes, and so those days we're also keeping the Sabbath, doing this. We are under the law, and we didn't know. Praise the Lord, and Christians have even migrated from the original Sabbath to Roman Catholic Sabbath. The original Sabbath, who the Lord Himself established for people of Israel. Christians have migrated from that. The, uh, the Galatians tried that and Apostle Paul warned them. Now Christians are not even serving that day. They are serving Sunday as Sabbath. And when you say they will try to defend themselves on Sunday, it's not a Sabbath. We only, who told you? It's a Sunday, it's a Sabbath for Roman Catholic religion. And the Roman Catholic tried to blend Christianity with their religion and brought to us. And that's what we are taking. We thank God that we all have the Bible now. And we can read and know the difference. Praise the Lord. We all have the Bible now. We can read and we know the difference. Hallelujah. 
Do you get it? So they are the one who established Sunday Sabbath. They are the one who established uh, uh, Christmas season. They are the one who established uh, uh, Easter or for their idols. Christmas particularly for 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 for, for government. Praise the living God. And that is what Christians are following now. Hallelujah. And so that was the issue. And the issue here is that heart is also very wicked. And if you don't uh, 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 check your heart at the end of the day, you are doing wrong. That, but the heart will tell you you are right. So Jeremiah talk about this heart under the law. Bible says whatever was said under the law is said to those who are under the law. So it's, Jeremiah was taking talking to people under the law. Jeremiah chapter um, 15, sorry, 17 verse 9. He says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know? Who can know? That means you yourself, even that you have your heart, you don't know what is in your heart. That is why somebody can be a very vibrant Christian today and the next time you see that person, you become a drunkard. That was that thing was in the heart, but with the, the person they didn't know. That's one one among us was sharing the testimony that a person who brought me into Christianity died a drunkard. And I, I say he said at that time, the guy was very vibrant, firebrand Christian. Every time he came to pick him to by then he was a Muslim. But this guy was able to win him into Christianity. Now he's part of the kingdom preachers. But the one who did that and win him into Christianity died drunkard. So at that time, the heart was hiding that thing. But he didn't know that it was a drunkard in the heart. But at that point in time, the heart manifests itself. Hallelujah. So the heart is very deceptive. And so it deceived these people under the law to believe that they are righteous. So when Jesus Christ came, they didn't believe it. And they didn't accept him. And they said they are righteous. Hallelujah. May this be far away from you. Praise the living God. So people under the law, they are sinners by nature. They commit sin not because they want to sin. They commit sin because the sin has revived within them and it moved them to do it even when they try to be physically good because of the ten commandment is is taking them still their heart according to the scripture is rotten and their heart is very deceptive and wicked praise the lord that is why no one can be justified before god in the day of judgment when he's that person is keeping the law that is why a warning has been given to us that we should have to come out from the law. Bible make it clear. Galatians chapter 3 verse 10 that whoever is under the law, whoever keeps the law is under curse. Because when you keep one, you must continue to keep the 613, the rest of the 612 laws. It was it's what 613. So you keep one, it's left, left with 612. You have to keep all. That's what the scripture says. If you fail to do that, you are under a curse. Hallelujah. And that is why when the, first, uh, the uh, Jewish people, when the Israelites failed to pay tight, the, uh, the book of Jeremiah or Jeremiah prophesied against them, they are under a curse. That curse is not in the pain of the tight, it's in the law already. So when you refuse to do it, the curse is coming. It's not, it's not in the failing to pay the tithe. It's in the law. It's that curse covering the whole law. So when you fail one, that curse is on you. So when they fail to pay tithe, uh, 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 Malachi reminded, reminded them that you are under a curse. Praise the Lord. Christians don't know what they are playing with. Christians of today don't know what they are playing with. They are playing with it. And pastors made them to think that it's okay to choose some of the law, pay tight, and leave the rest. Because you are a Christian. You are not under the law, but you can pay tight. You are not under the law, but you can observe some days as special. You are not under the law. And this is the delusion that pastors of today give to the people. 
They tell them they are not under the law, but in, in, in reality, they are under the law. Hallelujah. It's a delusion. Apostles knew this thing, that when you keep one of the law, you are obligated to keep all. And so when, praise the Lord, Pharisees suggested, the Pharisee believers suggested that we should go back to the law. Ten commandments. Yeah, actually, they were talking about ten commandments. And Apostle Paul said no. Apostle Peter said no. It's a yoke. It's a yoke. Because you think you are keeping the ten commandments, the, the rest. It is not possible. You have to keep all. You have to keep all eight rituals. Because according to Apostle James, he said when you, when you, 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 you commit one mistake in the one law, you have offended all the law. The same thing when you take one that you are keeping it, you have done what? You are also done. You have to keep all of them. The same thing when Jesus Christ was come to also take the Ten Commandments out, he also took all of them out. So the law, we can't take some and leave some. We can't take some and leave them. As Christ pastors of today are teaching the Christians, that is not true. You cannot take some and leave some. So the Lord Jesus Christ came to end it all. And that's what the scripture says in the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 4. That Christ is the end of the law for righteousness for those who believe, to those who believe. So when you believe that indeed Christ has ended the law, then righteousness of God is given to you. Just as Abraham believed God's promise and he was also giving him righteousness of God. The same thing. By this we become the, son, the children, uh, the daughters and sons, sons and daughters of Abraham. Praise the Lord. Abraham, God promised him that I give you a child. And Abraham believed it. And Bible said by that, it was counted to him as righteousness. So Abraham's righteousness was free gift. And Bible said Abraham cannot boast about his righteousness because he didn't work for it. Praise the Lord. Abraham cannot boast of his righteousness because he didn't work for it. He only believed in God's promise. And then it was give, granted to him as righteousness. The same thing that the Bible said when we also believe that Christ died on the cross to bring the law to an end, then we also receive righteousness from God, just as, just as Abraham believed and also received righteousness from God. And by that, we become the sons of Abraham, sons and daughters of Abraham. And most pastors of today, they made us to believe that when we we're talking about son and Abraham, Abraham's blessing is about material things. So when you pay tight, then you become a son of Abraham or a daughter of Abraham. That is a delusion. We are talking about being a son of Abraham is about faith. Then Abraham had to receive righteousness from God. The same faith we must have to also receive righteousness from God. Amen. Praise the living God. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. So, these people were deceived. Hallelujah. So, mm, the law, what the law could not do in the flesh. The flesh already, the sin was already, lies in the flesh, dead, was not are revived. But the Lord came and revived it. Instead of destroy the sin in the flesh, he couldn't do it. It's rather revive it. And so Jesus Christ has to come and do the opposite. So in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 2, it says for the law of the, of the spirit of life in Christ, Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. You see? So Jesus Christ has a law of spirit. That he gave to us and set us free from the law of death and sin. The Ten Commandments was made for sinners. So it's called the law of sin and death. Because when it came, it's rather brought death. So it's called the law of sin and death. So it's the law of spirit made us free from that. That's what the Bible says. Who, whoever walks in the spirit is not under the law. When you walk by the spirit of God, you are not under the law. Praise the Lord. So why do you not fornicate? The Spirit moves you to do that. Why do you not commit adultery? Why do, do you not steal? Why do you not do all these evil, evil things? The Spirit moves you to do that. You are not under the law. But if you are not being moved by the Spirit, you want to people to, pastors to read Ten Commandments to you. Thou shall not commit adultery. Thou shall not do Sabbath. Thou shall not do... You say, when you, do, you are doing that, you are under the, the law of sin and death. And at the, eventually, you die spiritually. 
Praise the Lord. And say, for what the law could not do in that it, it was weak through the flesh. The law was weak because the flesh was already having the sin in, the, in it, but dead. But when the law came, instead of the help the flesh to overcome the law or to crush the, the law in the flesh, sin in the flesh, he didn't do that. It's rather revived the sin. So he said the law was too weak to the flesh. God did it by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Jesus Christ came in the likeness of sinful flesh like our flesh, but it was not flesh. It was not a descent. Sinful flesh. Praise the Lord. It's a, it's a flesh, a word that transformed into a flesh. So it's flesh like us, but it's not sinful flesh. In the likeness of sinful flesh, on account of sin, he condemns sin in the flesh. So the death of Jesus Christ is to condemn sin in the flesh. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Is to condemn sin in the flesh. So when you believe in Jesus Christ, that revival of sin in the flesh that this, the Lord did. Jesus Christ condemned that thing and destroyed the sin and circumcised the heart. The, the heart that produced that evil thought is circumcised it. So Bible says, our circumcision is not the flesh. It's in the spirit. It's in the heart that the Holy Spirit does it. So from that time going, the heart will not produce evil thought anymore. Let me tell you something. When you become truly Christian, I'm telling you, I got to, I'm saying truly Christian because formerly we're not truly Christians. We're following churches, but they are, we're not true Christians. We are the churches, the person themselves, they are under the law and baptizing into us, into the law. So we're all law keepers and we all belong to Judaism. We're not Christians. But when you become a true Christian, and your heart is circumcised. Your heart does not produce evil desires again. Evil thoughts again. Evil things again. What happens is that you have a battle from external. The enemy throws the battles against you. So any evil thought that comes into your mind. At the day, from the time you become a Christian. It's not from your heart again. It's from the outside. When you are under the law. The battle starts from within you. You fight a, 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 a inside battle, not a, a standard battle. But when you become a Christian, a true Christian, and your heart is circumcised, you fight external battle. That the enemy will throw weapons of kind of of evil thought and everything, trying to capture you once again and put you under something, under bondage. Praise the Lord. And so by that, that is why the scripture says we should put on all the armor of God. So when you become a Christian, external battle that you want to fight. So you have to put on all the armor of God. So the evil thought that the enemy will shoot as arrow into your brain will be blocked. If anything of evil that the enemy will shoot into you will be, will be blocked by the putting on the armor of God. But if you don't do that, the enemy will capture you once again. That's what Apostle Peter said. If after they have come out from the pollution of the world, they adapt, ad, allow themselves to be captured again, the situation of their situation become worse than the first. I pray that this thing will not happen to you. I pray that none of us will experience that thing in the name of Jesus. So now we become true Christians when now we believe that Christ has ended all the law. And for that matter, he has given us a new commandment which says, Love one another as you as I have loved you, and that is what we keep. That is what the Holy Spirit moved us to do. Hallelujah! And by that, your heart is circumcised, and your heart does not produce evil thought anymore. Every evil thought that comes into your brain, every evil thought that comes into your life is from the external. The devil will be throwing the fiery, hallelujah, weapons. That is what the Bible says: we should stand and fight the devil. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. So, when Apostle Paul was under the law, he was describing his situation that he cannot, he cannot handle himself. He, the things that he doesn't want to do, he does it. All the desires of the flesh. Hallelujah. The flesh want to kill. 
Apostle Paul will do that. The first one to do this, Apostle Paul will do it. Because he didn't know how he can get himself free. But after he has come to Christ, and Christ has redeemed him, destroyed the sin in the flesh, and now he has, he's able, he's free from this bondage of slavery of sin, now Apostle Paul with boldness can say that now I can bring my body under subjection. Because the body is now don't have that revival of sin in it again. I have control over it now and from now onwards. So 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27 says, But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. He's saying this when he has become a Christian. But when he was describing a situation where he cannot control himself, what he doesn't want to do, he does it. What he's hit, he, he finds himself practicing it. But then he was under the law. So when he came to Christianity, and then Jesus delivered him from being slave of sin, now he said, now I can bring my body into subjection. I discipline my body, bring into subjection. Lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Hallelujah. So we have to be able to bring our body into subjection. It is the reason why James told us that we have now the authority to resist the devil. At first, while we are under the law, the sin is already in us. So when the devil says anything, he supported us and it, we are moving. But now in the book of James chapter seven, verse uh, chapter 4, verse 7, it says, Therefore, submit to God. Submit to God. Submit to the truth of God. Hallelujah. Resist the devil and he will flee. From you. Hallelujah. In the time that we are under the law, they will talk to us and we have no option because we have that desire already in us and we are just following. But he says now, everything is dead. Jesus Christ has condemned sin in our flesh through the, his death on, his, on the cross. So now we have the authority. We have the capacity. We have the ability to resist the devil. When he suggests to us, we can say, no, devil, come out from my life. Go away from me. And he says, the Bible says you flee. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. So, if a person who knows the truth that you know now, keeps sinning, hallelujah, like a person under the law, it is considered by God as a willful sin. As a willful sin. And so in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, 20. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10, 26, it says, For if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer remain a sacrifice for sins. So, when somebody came to know the truth, as we have got to know, and we keep sinning as somebody under the law, the Bible says, there is no, hallelujah, the Bible indicates that, that kind of sin that you are keeping is considered as a willful sin. That means you are intentionally doing it because you have all the capacity to resist that sin. Hallelujah. You have all the, the Lord Jesus Christ has given all the ability to us to resist it. Praise the living God. In the name of Jesus. Do you know, uh, just I received that message from here. There are some people who came on the internet and they are always telling me, I will provide you this thing. I will do this thing for you. And then you get more uh, viewers and other things. Hallelujah. Yeah, I think they are disturbing me. And I, I'm suspecting they are the one who are blocking me from getting viewers. Because I don't mind them. And when it's happened that way, they are uh, my... My, my, the viewers will not come. Sometimes it's only two people, three people that will come. So I thought they are doing something to hack me so that I will, I will, I will, I will go, go for them. They have just sent me, about two of them have sent that information right now. I believe they are watching. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so that is the point here. Hallelujah. And so, if you are a Christian, you don't intentionally go contrary to the will of Jesus Christ. The only command that Jesus, uh, Bible, uh, 
Bible shows that God has given to us only two as Christians. Now, John talk about these two commandments. First John chapter 3, verse 22. He says, And whatever we ask, we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing to his uh, pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave as he gave us the commandment. Yes. So this is the commandment of God that when we do, hallelujah, we, when we do, we keep it that only two commandment that when we do, hallelujah, we do what? We please, we, we, he's so pleased with us. Two commandment when we do, hallelujah, he's pleased with that, that we believe in Jesus Christ, that he's the son of God who came to die on the cross, brought the law to an end. When we believe that, we have done all the righteousness that God is expecting from us. And then we keep the commandment, love one another. Mean keeping this commandment is a means to keep the righteousness that God has given to you on the fire. Hallelujah. It's give it, given to you on the fire. So two things. One, you obtain the righteousness by believing in Christ. You don't work for it. Then you keep it by loving others. As Jesus Christ loves you. You keep that righteousness. Hallelujah. Simple and powerful. More than everything. And this is what Christians don't want to keep by. They don't want to leave it. They don't want to believe it. And pastors are saying that, yeah, and that, that Jesus could not, did not end at all. And that, that Bible said this is what we do that will please God. In the Old Testament, those who are keeping the law, testament, they make, they are, they are doing all those things. Bible said their their righteous acts are like filthy garment before the Lord. And may the Lord save His children. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, can I hear me somebody? Can I hear some me somebody? May the Lord bless you, Kababa. This is the difference between you, who has known the law. And who has known the truth and those who are still under the law, the difference. The difference is that they commit sin because sin moved them to do that. And you live a righteous life because Holy Spirit moved you to do that. That's the difference. The difference between you and them is, is that they try to please God by keeping the law. But you don't try to please God. It's God himself moving you by his spirit to do things right. That's the difference. Hallelujah. The difference between you and them. Komasianda. Loshabe brokapa. Lekabra yandalaba. Loshabe brokapa. Lokaba zota. Please share the message and let somebody be blessed. Share the message, let somebody be blessed and invite others to also join us so that every day we'll be blessed with these messages. Hallelujah. This is the message that will lead you into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So the messages we've been listening, we're, we're listening the message and the law. Praise the living God. And one interesting thing is that, is it interesting or what? Uh, I, I don't know what I should say, but one interesting thing is that these people who preach Christ, and will not practice what Christ told them to do. These people will preach gospel of the cross, and they will tell you Jesus Christ did not end the law. So you will see that this is a great delusion on the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. So they will preach Christ to make you to think that you are Christian, but in the reality, you are not a Christian. Praise the Lord. The difference between you and those under the law. The difference between you and those under the law. You do your righteous acts because the Holy Spirit moves you to do that. People under the law, they do their righteous act because they want to keep the commandment of Moses. Hallelujah. And that is the difference between you. Hallelujah. Call Masi and they broke up, papa, look up, papa. 
And physically, we all look like the same. But in the sight of God, we are not the same at all. In the name of Jesus, give thanks to the Lord for the salvation given to your soul. In the name of our Lord Jesus, in Jesus mighty name they keep sending me that, this message that they want to uh, manage my, my page for me and uh, I think they have to pay some huge amount of money before they can do that and I have been, they are trying all that you, you see this with another ones are coming in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, pray the Lord, my God, my Savior, my Redeemer, Lord, Rika Bazuk Taliande, Lika Brayapa, Loka Bazuk Tape, Lika Brayapa, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, pray the Lord, Mande Bro Yapa, Lika Brayapa, Lika. Begin to give thanks to the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Worship the name of the Lord. A black of manga. Roka pa zok tape. Lika pra yapa. Loka pa zok tandiba. Lika pra yapa. Loka pa zok tandiande. Loka shape pra yapa. Lika pra yapa. Loka shandiba. Loka pra yapa. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, give thanks to you. I bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we give thanks to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the message we've been sending out. The Lord has sent us to go out with. Hallelujah. The Lord has sent us to go out with. And we are going out every day. From here we are going. Hallelujah. By God's grace, we got to speak speakers on the on the distance. We we preach. We preach to people. And the Bible says this message of the kingdom will be sent. We'll, be, we'll preach all over the world. As a witness to every soul. Hallelujah. As a witness to every nation. Call Mandalaba, Bro Yaba, Le Cabra, Yaba, Bro Shandalaba, Le Cabra, Yaba, Lo Shabe, Bro Kapala, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. You are praying, giving, we are praying, asking the Lord, as He has brought you into this truth, may you never fall from the truth. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord keep you in the truth. Apostle John said, I rejoice seeing your sons, some of your sons, walking in the truth. Because walk in this truth is not easy. Hallelujah. There are kind, all kinds of influence and manipulation from the powers of darkness, from human beings, from their agent. Who so called call themselves Christians, brothers, uh, pastors, preachers, they are all working all around. Will you, will, you, will, you, will you be surprised that since we came here, churches, many churches here, they are praying against us that we are preaching falsehood. What you are listening is a falsehood to them. We are preaching falsehood, and so they are praying against us that God should crush us, to scatter us, to cause something to happen to me. Hallelujah. And this prayer is, they are offering this prayer to devil. They are just giving the devil to work, work to do. Praise the Lord. Because God will not answer this prayer. This prayer does not go to God. Hallelujah. You have missed your way. And we are coming to tell you that they come out from the way. You got angry. So, it is very difficult for people and under the sun to walk in the truth that you are listening to. Very difficult. Because their minds are blind. They are dead spiritually. They are carnal. And, and it takes only God's grace. So for us, we, for us to even come into this truth, it, the, God, the grace of God, we are asking the Lord, help us to walk in this truth. Help me, O oh Lord, to walk in this truth. In the name of Jesus Christ, that I will never depart from this truth. May you open your mouth and pray. 
Commanda la baba la baba. Le yapa block shanda la baba. yapa block shabe block shanda la baba la baba. yapa bosok tandere ba. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, pray the Lord my God, my Savior, my Redeemer. Bow yapa pa zok tabe. Le kabra yapa. Le kabro yapa baba. Lo kaba zok tandere. Le kabra yapa. Lo kaba zok tandere ba. Lo kamanzi andere ba. Lo Father, get me the grace to walk on God and the truth of God that I will never depart from the truth of God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, pray the Lord. Mande bro yaba, lo kapa zokta de la baba la ba, le kapa yaba, lo shamande bro kapa, la kapa zokta de la ba, le kapa yaba, lo kapa zokta de la ba. In Jesus' mighty name. I remember there was a time I have a very best pastor friend. And um, there was a prayer meeting time that we, uh, it just dawned on me to pray for him. We prayed as we prayed. The Lord revealed that this pastor is in the cage. But there is light shining on him in that cage. And the Lord said, he has certain truth and that truth is the light he is holding. But that truth cannot set him free from the bondage of the law. Praise the Lord. So there are some persons that are having some truth. Praise the Lord. And it's like light to them. But they are still under the bondage of the law. We are praying that all the sincere men of God who are under the bondage of the law they are certain truth, and they are living as like like me. I was also having some certain some truth, and I was dying for it. I was, but I didn't know I was still in bondage. We are praying the Lord will release them. The Lord will release them, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Rikaba zoktun dalaba, lika bra yapa, lok shabe brok tan deleba, lika ba ba zoktun deleba, lika bra yapa papa, lok kaba zokta pe, lok shabe brok kaba, lika bra yapa, lok shabe brok yan deleba, lika bra yapa brok shan deleba. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, pray the Lord my God, ba yapa ba ba ba, lok kaba zokta pe, lika bra yapa, lok shabe brok yan deleba, lika ba zok. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, pray the Lord, my God, my Savior. May the Lord release them in the name of our Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. So after praying for him, later on I call him and begin to present the message of the kingdom and how we should come out from the law from him. In the beginning, he didn't, he didn't really get it. So he was asking me, uh, so if I say the Ten Commandments has come to an end, then how can Jesus Christ judge the world? And I said, Jesus Christ has not come to judge the world with Ten Commandments. Bible says we are going to be judged by the law of liberty. According to the book of James, we are going to be judged by the law of liberty, not the Ten Commandments. Hallelujah. The law of liberty is the New Testament law. That God gave it to us in the new covenant law. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I let him understand and I quoted this scripture. The Bible says when we believe in Jesus Christ and love one another, that is the commandment God wants us to keep. For us to be righteous before him. That's all. And I explained that thing to him and he was like, wow. He humbly received the word. But by then, you're also having some truth. Then he was in cage. He humbly received that the, the, the word that the Lord sent to him through me. Hallelujah. So there are some people, pastors, they are genuine, but they are ignorant. Hallelujah. As Jesus Christ said to the Pharisees, if I had not come to tell you this, you have no sin. So the pastors, since they have not come across this message, God is still considering them. Hallelujah. But those who have come, come across this message and they are insulting us, they are praying against us, it will be a judgment on them. And we pray that the Lord will have mercy on them and still save such people. 
Praise the Lord. So we are praying for all the churches, all the pastors, every genuine pastor that want to come out or is seeking for the truth and he has not yet found the truth. May the Lord reach out to them. Even may the Lord send these messages to them miraculously on their phones. And when I come across it, may the Holy Spirit prompt them to watch it, that they can, through this, be transformed and be changed. May we open our mouth and pray. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Le cabra yapa, lo chape bro capa, le cabra yapa la bet. We pray for your children, O God, everyone, any pastor that my God, Father, Lord, you, uh, you, Lord, my God, you, you appointed, oh my God, to be your shepherd, O God, that is not my God, on the way of the truth, of Father. We pray to let that pastor be, oh my God, be touched, Father, Lord, if possible, send a message to them on their phone, miraculously, and prompt them by the Holy Spirit, watch it to the end, that by by this Lord, my God, let them be convicted and give themselves to you in the name of Jesus. Come from the way of Lord, my God, of the Lord, of the bondage of sin, Lord, my God, and bring them, my God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray to Lord God of Israel. Omanda pro ya be bra ya ba lo ka ba zuk ta be li ka bra ya ba li ka bra ya ba lo sha be bra ya ba in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth we pray lo ka bra ya ba li ka bra ya ba la be lo ka ma zi an de le ba lo ka ba zuk ta be pro ya pa pa zuk ta be in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth we pray Heavenly Father we give thanks to you now we are praying that the message of the Lord which will be upon us. We are asking the message of the Lord to come upon us. Hallelujah. The Bible said every morning the message of the Lord are new and compassions of the Lord are new. May this new message and compassions come upon us. In Jesus' mighty name, may you open your mouth and pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray to the Lord God of Egypt, everlasting Father, King of kings and the Lord of lords. Father, we pray for new mercy and compassion in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Pray the Lord God of Israel. Mande bro kapa le kapra yapa lo shape bro kapa le kapra yapa lo kaba zokta be le kapra yapa lo kaba zokta de daba le kapra yapa lo kaba zokta de laba le kapra yapa lo kaba zokta de laba le kaba zokta de laba lo kaba zokta de ande le kaba zokta de laba le kaba zokta de laba lo kaba zokta de liba laba le kaba zokta let the message of the Lord shown on us, so God, show your mercy upon us. By your mercy, compassion, Lord my God, and compassion deliver us from the works of the enemy. Deliver us from the powers of darkness. Deliver us from the, in the prosperities and powers of God. Father, Lord, save our life from every work of the devil. In Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, my God, my Savior. Mande bro yapa. Le cabra yapa. Lo shamande bro tadiande. Le cabra yapa. Bazo tondereba. Le cabra yapa. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Pray the Lord. My God, my Savior, my Redeemer. Le in Jesus mighty name we pray hallelujah we are praying that the Lord will keep our name in the book of life as I tell you I was saying that hallelujah when you come to know the truth and you believe that your name you believe that Christ has ended the law and you confess it Bible say you are saved you are saved means your name is in the book of life so our prayer is that 
the Lord will give her the grace to, to walk in a way that our name will remain in the book of life forever. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we are praying. May you open them up and pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray to Lord my God. Father, Lord, let my name remain in the book of life. Forever and ever, let my name remain in the book of life. In the name of Jesus, permit nothing by any means to get my name wrong from the book of life. In the name of Jesus, let your power prevail over every influence of the devil, every influence of the enemy against me. In the name of Jesus, help me, Lord my God, to walk in the way that, Lord, my, your name, my name will be in the book of life forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, Lord, we also pray that make it impossible for us to lose your kingdom. Make it impossible for me to lose your kingdom. Make it impossible for anybody under my ministry to lose the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray the Lord my God, save our lives to God from the powers of darkness. In Jesus' name, there's our prayer and our heart filled. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the Lord my God in Jesus' mighty name. We are praying for kingdom preachers that the Lord will continue to anoint us. The Lord will continue to give us the ability to preach the gospel with power manifestation, to give the, uh, preach the gospel with the spirit of conviction that everyone that will listen to us, every child of God that will listen to us will be convicted by the Holy Spirit and move into the kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ and press into the kingdom. May you open your mouth and pray. Father, we pray for kingdom preachers. Father, Lord, we pray for divine, uh, Lord my God, uh, and fortify, fortification, fortify us, strengthen us, empower us. Lord my God, give us the boldness to preach the gospel in the name of Jesus. May your favor go before us. Level mountains, cut through bars of irons, any crooked way not made by the enemy against us be nullified. Father, Lord, give us authority over powers of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we pray this silent the enemy in the name of Jesus. Wherever we stand, Lord, my God, let the people be convicted in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let the demonic powers, oh my God, be cast out as we preach the kingdom. May the Holy Spirit Spirit move in the supernatural way to bring your children to, to, to repentance. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let the healing take place to God. Let the Lord stretch out his hands as we preach the kingdom. Stretch out your hands and perform signs and wonders to confirm your word with the signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth we pray. We are praying for divine provision. That anything that needful, that is needful or anything that is necessary for us to get in order to push forward the gospel, may the Lord God of Israel begin to begin to provide for us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Whatever needful, whatever necessary that we need to put the gospel forward, we ask for divine provision for that in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bring people who are Lord my God, raise providers in Lord my God in this group and also bring more to it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May the Lord raise providers in his, in, in his church in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Open great doors and may the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may the Lord God of Israel. May the in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Father, we thank you that you have done this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God richly bless every one of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are blessed and you are blessed once again in Jesus' name. Amen. I decree a blessing upon your life. I decree favor upon your life. I decree healing upon your life. I decree good health, good health upon your life. Favor of the Lord come upon you. May the Lord promote you in your website. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for increment, increase, increment into your life. Financial increment into your life. In Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord cause all things to work together for your good. In Jesus' mighty name, may the Lord sustain you in the truth and never fall from the grace. In Jesus' name, I pray for you. I thank the Lord for your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank the Lord. Bless you in Jesus' name. May the Lord you are blessed.